Hello and welcome to this making of video for Carrier Command 2. These videos are around bits of technology that we've developed that we're excited and proud of. They may be unique in themselves or unique in how they are applied only in Carrier Command 2. They are videos that are simply cut from recorded conversations between developers. They're just informal chats but hopefully they give some interesting insight into the development of the game. In this video we are discussing the procedural island generation. It's kind of a crossover between using height map generation and using tile sets uh, in order to, to make kind of an organic uh, art authored world. Enjoy! So the, the actual individual art assets I think I can actually just uh, that our, our rendering has changed. I think we changed some of the data in these so when you hover them in the uh, definitions list it just shows you the material type texture, doesn't it, or the material type data. It doesn't actually uh, show you more than that, but you can see what the tiles are. I mean, they're just these um, triangles with uh, some cliff faces on most of the time, or a little bit of detail in the middle or something like that. Go onto the generator, and I mean, I can just click the random, and it just keeps generating different islands for me. You can kind of see there they show up. There's the actual tile. And this isn't quite how they appear in game, is it? Because the underwater stuff actually drops away more in game. But yeah, yeah, I think it changes a little bit as you generate larger sized ones. But in the game, yeah, the, um, the kind of underwater terrain falls off a lot steeper. And obviously there's island uh, trees on the island as well. Right, yeah, there's just a slight slight difference there. But if I, if I click hitting random, then it's going to keep giving me different ones. And I can play with... So, I've... Yeah, so to get trees, I think you've got to scroll down and there's a whole tree section with a lot of parameters to control the the noise and like how bunched together they are and things like that. Nice. And if you okay. just, uh, if you hit the, the random button, it's going to generate the trees and you should see um, a load of kind of boxes and colored circles that represent like where the trees are and how they've been partitioned up for the rendering this and then if cool. you go to settings you can render tree meshes and disable rendering tree bounds and you should see it as it looks in game cool and um how do we decide where trees are is it just triangles on the floor and we just plant trees at random places on the triangles and the triangles are a pair tile thing um yeah we'll take a look at it when we look at the individual tile editor but yeah similar to how we've got a nav mesh for pathfinding around uh, with the vehicles we've also got triangles that define a sort of nav mesh that is the area that is acceptable for trees to generate and then it kind of picks all these random points and checks if they're on that mesh so we can filter out like areas like on the runway um, we've obviously not got trees generating there or within buildings and things as well. And I think we start with some kind of random noise, and it's just like Perlin noise or something, just to generate kind of our base terrain. And that's yeah, a... we we use that to generate a height map. Which, sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of I think Perlin noise is a pretty standard place to start for any kind of terrain generation stuff, um, and it's. It works in a similar way, I guess, to there, except we're ending up with like a really low fidelity height map for an island, um, which is super low triangle count. Um, and then essentially at that point, we say, okay, instead of rendering this height map with a triangle, we're going to render it with our, our authored meshes, which an artist has created. Um, and I think the idea um, behind uh, having artist created triangles rather than maybe trying to make it create it all ourselves with procedural code. Um, I think the idea is that we've got more kind of art control over it. So, with the procedural side of things, um, we've wanted to use procedural for making the the world kind of limited size and having that kind of scale. But we still wanted to be able to um, have like a kind of an artist authored look to an environment to be able to create that without necessarily relying on us just finding quite the right procedural numbers i think from a labor point of view it's a lot easier to get an artist to do the smaller details than it is for us to start to try and generate those because uh, that'll be a lot more difficult than more of some of the kind of the macro scale the larger scale stuff 
So we, we start by generating the um, the Perlin noise data, and then I can see there's two different triangle colors. There's like green triangles and gray triangles, or gray edges, sorry. And I think the gray edge is where there's a slope greater than what is allowed. So we kind of set a maximum um, height change. And then I think the next step basically resolves that and just pulls stuff down and pushes stuff up in order to make sure that there's um, never um, a height change between two uh, corners of a triangle that is greater than what we've programmed in our settings. And that's simply because we need the triangle, we need the, the artist authored triangle to, to fit in that space. And if the height change is too great, then we won't have that triangle. Um, so if I click step again, I was expecting that to work, but it's actually, it doesn't seem to be going through the whole phase. It just seems to be moving my cursor around a bit. It's... Oh, yeah, you've got to click toggle auto step. Right, I see. And that will jump you to the next stage of the generator. Perfect. Okay, I've got that. And that's then resolved all of my points. So they are, um, it's just relaxed them a little bit, I guess, so that there's, there's not too much difference in the heights. Um, and then we've got this weird one next where it just follows this um, this hexagon around with a central point and then the six edges relating to that edge. Is this actually doing the relaxation at this point? I think it is, isn't it? It's going to vertex to vertex and relaxing that vertex relative to its six neighbors in order that it kind of ends up at the most average point it can do. Um, and it moves that vertex either up or down and it does that repeatedly until uh, there's no more um, no more issues, essentially. Yeah, that second phase was um, essentially like doing a, a very rough relaxation where it just makes sure that the height difference between all of the corners isn't more than the maximum that we've set. And then in this phase, we're going through and we're actually making sure that every corner on the entire grid is accessible by what we're referring to as a grass edge, which is an edge that is, I think, a slope of less than two or something. And the idea with that is just to make sure that the final generated island, there aren't any points that vehicles can't access, basically. And then on the next stage, we've got all these green dots. I think these green dots are what is above water. So these are above water tiles. Um, and I think that's important because we don't have cliffs underwater. I think that, that's correct in saying. So we're only interested in actually putting our artist authored tiles um, above water and specifically not below. We'll just use like a flat basic triangle for anything below water. Um, although not, not to say that that technique couldn't be expanded to do that. Um, it's just the, the style that we've gone for. And then if I go to the next step, so this is an interesting one. I can't remember what this one does. Um, I've got my orange cubes and my pink cubes. Um, yeah, so there you're looking at um, locations that it's identified to place buildings. So your orange ones are probably a, a runway by the looks of it. And then the pink one, if it's just one tile, it's going to be maybe the command center for the island. Cool. Yeah, that looks nice. And then we get to the next one. And I think I'm right in saying that green is just a basic triangle. And if it's gray, that's where it's planning on putting some cliffs. So that's where the height difference is greater than a threshold. And um, it's going to put a cliff. And you can see the different types of cliffs and there's different types of edges. Um, the point I'm looking at here is quite interesting because we've got the uh, triangle here at the end. And this is the end of the cliff. You can see it's cliff on one edge and then it's grass on the two other edges so this cliff's going to have to kind of terminate within this triangle so that it's got two uh, grass slopes on the other edges um, but these triangles are not flat at this point so they've got different heights on them um, and some of them are flat some of them have got um, uh, a slope to them and, and grass edge where there's no cliff can have I think a gradient of one um, one height difference, whereas a cliff is two height difference or more, essentially. Um, and if I go to the next one, I clicked it. There we go. Ah, oh, this one's this one's awesome. And this is showing us all of the possible tiles we could drop here. And it's useful to note at this point that it is possible for a triangle to potentially not have any artist authored um, content 
for this triangle um, and that is because um, you know we might not just not have made a, a an artist author triangle for every single possible uh, situation um, in which case that's okay it will in that's in the game it will just say okay I tried this value but it didn't work so I'm going to pick a new random number and start my island generation again and usually within within a few attempts uh, it doesn't fail more than a few times in a row and it will eventually find a valid island so not every single seed is actually a valid seed on all of the biomes i think some of the biomes they are i think some of the biomes can't fail uh some of them can and uh, i think the, the bigger high differences are more likely to have a problem um, but this is pretty awesome so this is just showing us every single uh, matching tile and I think from a, a technical point of view you'd say this is the marching cubes um, at this point where it was just simply pattern matching uh, we're just looking at yeah, the context it's... And... sorry it's similar to marching cubes and we were also looking at wave function collapse which is a similar algorithm in some ways to kind of go through and fit all these tiles into place in a way that they all match up and meet up when they've kind of all flooded across and generated the full island but I think at this point, uh, I think we were inspired by wave function collapse, but I think it ended up just being marching cubes because any of these tiles could match up with, with any of the, the others. It's just as simply the case that we don't just have one um, piece of art for each situation, but we've potentially got multiple options for each situation. Is that correct? I don't think there's any actual marching, uh, any actual wave function collapse at this point. Um, I think there is to an extent, but I think by the time we've resolved all of the sort of cliff heights and things, there tends to be only one possibility for each triangle at that point anyway. So there's no real kind of, um, I guess, like propagation of the um, the potential tiles that can go in one spot. All the variations that you're seeing in each spot are actually just um like artistically different variations of the same sort of configuration of cliffs and grass so i think at this point there's not too much decision that's going on there's only really one possibility for each spot cool okay um I'll, I'll, we won't go into what marching cubes and, and wave function collapse are at this point because that would be half an hour chat i think but i'll go to the next stage so they've all disappeared it's all gone green I presume means that I click it once more and it's generating my geometry. No, there's more. There's more stages. Yes, I think I remember this. Um, is is this stage required anymore because we ditched the three layers, or is this the simply the relaxation phase? I think this is just relaxing the um the the cliffs and the grass to make the slopes more organic and flow more, isn't it? Yeah. With the, these purple lines, what we're seeing here is if it's got two different heights, then that's a, that's a, a special uh, cliff piece uh, where there's there's two heights existing on the, the tile that we're using there. And then some of the triangles, they don't have two sets of triangles above each other. And that means that there's, there's just one set, uh, there's just one level to be used. But there's always another <laughs> stage this so uh what's going on with this this point we are relaxing i think so you can see uh, here we are uh, there's these lines showing where stuff is essentially getting pulled or pushed pulled down or pushed up um, and that's essentially uh stitching the tiles together and then relaxing the flow of the geometry so that there's um that there isn't hard edges uh, as particularly on the, the the flat edge where there's uh, no cliff face then it uh, relaxes that area a lot to kind of um, to uh, fold it down and I, th I think when it does this it's simply moving the corners and then everything else on the triangle um, just uh, adapts we don't have visualization of that but the the, the rest of the triangle um, I think it kind of just follows like a, a bezier a surface. So as you move the corners, you're kind of uh, modifying this kind of bezier surface, which the rest of the tile relaxes to. And then, and then that's the final stage. And of course, we've got our geometry generated. Um, 
an interesting one. We've got a lot of little small short cliffs. And we thought that was an airfield, but actually it's an industrial site. It's just a group of four buildings, and then I think just to the side here, there's our command center that's generated. Uh, the magnitude and the scale of noise is very important in, in terms of the appearance uh, of the island. And then we've kind of got these post-processing effects, I think, with the smoothing. Um, yeah, there's kind of a few layers of noise. We've got like a set of Perlin noise that defines the shape of the island. Um, and then there's kind of another set of noise parameters that are applied onto the actual geometry to offset all the vertices to give it a bit of a more kind of organic look. I think if you look at the um, like some of the underwater stuff, these are just flat triangles, but they get sort of deformed and pushed around a bit, so they look a bit more rocky and organic. And then on top of that, there's an additional layer of noise which controls the placement of the trees um so that they kind of spawn it is important in, in kind of getting it right in having different base art for the different biomes and i think for, for me what makes the island generation in character command interesting is the mix between the procedural generation and the um the authored art uh, it's quite unusual i think to to get um authored art and procedural generation in this way um quite often if you're mixing the two then you've kind of got a procedural stage and then an artist will come in and start kind of um, kit bashing and clipping cliffs in to the uh the grounds to kind of create these cliffs but in in this work there's there's no um there's no clipped geometry it all just stitches together perfectly and it's all just a clean single mesh and from a technical point of view that's quite good because it means there's less triangles to render it also means there's less fill rate because there's less triangles on top of each other and stuff yeah the desert biome is probably the most unique in terms of geographical features yeah and uh, when these islands start to get big do, do, is is 64 32 uh size the um the largest island size we get in the game um, I think underneath where you've got the width and height in tiles, you've got a bounds size as well. And if you set that to 8,000 to 8,000, I believe that's the maximum size that you get in game. Right. Awesome. So that is slightly bigger, maybe by 20 tiles in each direction. And as they start to get bigger, they start to take a while to generate. But see, and that that's, that's in meters, is it? So that's 8,000 meters by 8,000 meters. Yeah, that's meters, and then the numbers above are in actual tiles, triangular tiles. Awesome. So that is a um, that's a pretty big world size. Um, yeah, I mean that that is that is a very large strategy level. Um, I suppose from a gameplay point of view it's all about creating the the cliffs and the choke points um and the open areas in order to and also the height elevation and height differences in order to start to to promote the kind of the rts style gameplay um i see yeah and this is the uh this is actually a similar technique uh to uh what we've used on stormworks for generating the contour data uh for the map and that's simply uh, that we're just generating a, a rendering out a height map and then in texture space we then start to define our edges um, I think this is an entirely kind of new implementation and we've just um, it, it's a lot faster and um, gives us better results with less geometry and less actual geometry data in order to, to render all this because if you think about just how much data is being generated there. There's a huge number of vertices, a huge number of, of triangles required to render these these lines. Um, and this is the data that we use for the 3D holo map. Um, yeah, this is on the holo map. And then if you go back to your settings, you can switch on render filled contours. And that's what we show on the the individual, the, the small map screens. Oh, this is great. This is absolutely brilliant. Um, Yeah, with all the colors, you can really, really see all the different heights and stuff and what's going on.
Um, yeah, no, I'm just having fun now, to be honest. Um, let, let, let's press on with the video then. There we go. Um, so this is essentially the, the, the art asset that the uh, artist generates. Um, and again, uh, the, the base artwork, it's just got to be a, a tile set that fits together with the other tiles. And with this one, if you look at the profile of this edge here, it kind of kicks up here and then goes down the cliff with a certain pattern. And it's the, the exact same pattern that we've got on the other edge. So this tile would fit to itself. You could kind of repeat this tile six times in a circle and you kind of end up with a, a little mound kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so this is the this is the that's the the, the artwork that we're, that we're building from. And obviously, from a a development point of view, um, it's quite easy to make a triangle. Uh, and you know, you make a set of triangles, and that can take a while when you've made forty or sixty triangles. But then, uh, when you can generate unlimited islands from them, it starts to become quite an efficient way of 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 uh, developing the the environments and the worlds triangles of the nav mesh yeah so when the full island has been generated all of these triangles from all the different tiles in the island go into a big data structure where they get stitched together and this essentially defines where a vehicle can or cannot pathfind and that essentially works in pretty much the exact same way as the um as the the basic mesh stuff uh you know we're, we're, we're developing these triangles to match up with the the triangles on the other ones and these are created in this editor and they do have quite like a, a big snap radius to, to to snap to other nav mesh triangles but otherwise um they've just got to match the the other triangles next to them um so that the, the vertices are in there the, uh, are going to line up and, and snap to each other um and then i suppose we're just trying to keep the number of triangles quite low to keep the the pathfinding fast and the data to be simple and i think as the simpler nav meshes tend to just work better with the the pathfinding algorithms anyway um, and there's a little bit of a margin here you can see actually the the ai won't nav mesh to within a certain range of the the bottom of this cliff um, as it happens and that's just to avoid them getting stuck and at the, the top they're pushing their luck a lot more they're they're uh, a little bit more risk of going over the edge, but there's still a good bit of margin to to avoid them getting too close to the edge. Um, and then, of course, our tree mesh. There's no trees on this triangle. There's no tree data for it, the one I've got loaded in. But it would be a similar situation to the nav mesh. It would just be some triangles where trees can potentially grow. Um, they could handle in a similar way. Uh, this triangle does have markers. And I think I'm right in saying that these are either spawn or defensive position markers. So these are hints for the AI to either say, this is where we should uh, spawn, or this is, in these cases, we've got three cover markers to say, go and park up here, and this is a covered position potentially. Um, and then I think once we've generated the island, we actually generate a bit more metadata on these to say, where they're particular, where potentially covered from. So if they want to hide from a unit, they know that these are potentially hiding spots, but then they also know um, which directions they will be hidden from if they are on that spot. And then they can find a, a good hiding spot like that. And it's obviously simple data. We, we are rigging the data rather than necessarily trying to procedurally generate everything, but it just gives that bit more control over the how stuff is is going to work and it's a lot easier for us to go in and fix stuff without necessarily having to fix a procedural system if the data is not quite working the way we were hoping it would um, and again this is a lookout position so if a unit wants to go and look for uh you know on patrol or just to take up a defensive position it can it can look here and we've got a bunch of different ones we've got a command center defense point which is like a turret uh we've got the command center point which is just a marker just so the the ai know where the command center is um and then lookout cover and of course the spawn point and that just allows enemy units a place a safe place for them to to spawn potentially and of course they all get uh, algamated when the island is generated 
Um, I don't have anything in details. I can't. I have no idea what details are. Um, the details, yeah, we don't seem to have them on these grass cliff tiles, but these are things like lights, um, spotlights. And I think we also have a way with these to place um, boxes that show up on the hollow map. So when you look at some of the buildings on the hollow map, they show up as kind of like a floor plan. Um, and so we use we use this detail tool to place those rectangles that you see. And then we also use it to set up the uh, damage areas for the lava tiles. So the lava damages vehicles that go near them. Awesome. So you would think that the island generation would just be generating some geometry, but there's quite a number of layers of data that go to generating an island for the rendering purposes, but also a lot of it is AI data. And then there's some special data that we're, we're putting on as well, like lights and so on to be able to improve the, uh, the, the rendering. And I suppose the game developer, you just call all this rigging, I guess, but with the, it all needs to be integrated because of the way our island generation works. Um, a lot of the stuff needs to be dealt with and transformed and, um, and I mean, I don't think there's much to explain here. It's a very simple system that we've got where we can have special tiles that span more than one tile. So in this case, it is three separate tiles, uh, but um, we add them as a prefab. So they only appear when joined together for each other. And uh, as you can imagine, that is quite useful. For example, for a runway where the runway wants to just be a few tiles and in fact you, know, you can see here we could easily make the runway much longer um we've just got a single prefab and actually this, this runway is actually more than long enough for the game um uh but it's a, a simple system where we could start to expand and have have much much larger prefabs if we so wanted um as you remember in the generation phase there was a phase for placing prefabs and finding suitable places for them um, and I suppose you can just start to see the constraint there that iron generation could fail if you were trying to place a prefab that was too large and it just couldn't find a suitable place for it. Then um, the, the larger the prefab you make, the, the, the more chance there is of the, the generation failing. Um, these are quite fun. I think it's quite useful to just be able to create these these larger locations in the game as well where you know, we're really playing with the scale of the environments and we can have buildings that are so large, in fact, they don't even fit in, in, in one tile. And that's just very useful for, I suppose, telling the, the visual story of the game, but also um, uh, just creating kind of like a, 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 a more kind of authored strategy experience in, in some of the areas as well, from kind of like an RTS game creation point of view.